Okay, everybody, so I have been hearing and hearing and hearing about everybody oiling their hair. I used to oil my hair forever ago, but I think I was doing it the completely wrong way. Like I was just like slathering my hair with coconut oil until my hair literally looked like it was like gelled and wet, like sopping wet. And supposedly that's not how you do it. Um, so my hair is obviously, I have a lot of it, but it's a lot, but it's really like the actual texture of it is really fine. I also obviously colored my hair recently. So I'm just really trying to do everything possible to keep my hair in the most healthy shape that I can because I was off bleach and off like permanent hair color for two and a half years. And my hair is very, very healthy and long and strong right now. But obviously with bleaching, etc., comes damage that is just unavoidable. If people are telling you otherwise, they are lying to you. You're going to damage your hair if you color it or bleach it, period. Also, I blow dry my hair and so I just want to try to minimize the damage as much as possible. Also, I'm really, really focused on scalp health these days because I've realized that scalp health is the most important thing for hair health, obviously, it makes sense. I don't know why I put so much focus down here and just completely ignore the scalp because this is really where your hair growth and like your hair is coming from. So this is already kind of like the dead, you know what I mean? You can kind of maintain it, but really where you're gonna get healthy hair is focusing up here. I've already like cut out pretty much all dry shampoo. I will use the Vega More one if I need to, and I only use it maybe like once every two weeks when I really don't feel like washing my hair and I just need a little zhuzh, but I don't use any dry shampoo on a regular basis anymore because I do think it just like sits up there and like clogs hair follicles and that has been proven. So I just don't like to use it on a regular basis. I got a hair oil that I've seen on lots of people's pages, lots of people's videos, and I wanna try it myself. So it's this one, it's the Miele, Miele? I think that's how you say it. Rosemary Mint Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. It's infused with biotin, encourages longer and healthier hair. Um, it says it's for split-in care and scalp treatment. You can use this as a leave-in, but I am not. I think that's better for like natural, very um, coily hair. My hair is obviously too fine for that and it would weigh it down, but I'm gonna use it as a scalp treatment on my wash days. So I'm gonna wash my hair tonight. Um, my hair isn't too, too bad right now. I've been like, it's now that I've had it bleached and colored, it, it tends to go a little bit longer in between washes because obviously it's a little drier. But we're gonna um, do it how I've seen it done and I'll tell you how. So supposedly this works best if you stimulate the scalp and the hair follicles first by brushing just your scalp area pretty much. I already brushed throughout my hair just so it's like not as tangly. But I, now I'm gonna actually take some time and really focus on just brushing my hair on my scalp. I mean, I guess it makes sense. They said you can also um, like use your fingers and like just like massage, just like anything to kind of bring blood flow and like liven up the hair follicles. It'll also help it um, take in the oil a little bit better, supposedly, we shall see. Okay, so now that we have all of that done, you're supposed to just part your hair and put a couple of drops throughout your like scalp area. And if you wanna focus on areas that you have like thinner areas or whatnot, you can do that. Um, I always tend to like use like more than you're supposed to technically. I just like that about that. I just don't know how to like regulate. I'm just like, yes. Not, I'm not gonna use the whole thing of this, but I'll use a pretty good amount of it. And I'm focusing it just on the roots of my hair because this one is the rosemary one. So it's supposed to be good for hair growth. There's been a few studies about how it um, has been, it's possible that it does the same job as medoxinal, which I don't know how true that is. I mean, medoxinal is literally like a drug that is proven for hair growth, but I mean, if you can get it naturally, like that is kind of fucking cool. I'll report back. Obviously you still have to do it the same, like forever. Um, 
It doesn't happen overnight, but it's with consistent use. Now you're supposed to do this definitely not every day. Um, I've seen people doing it wrong and also people talking about how not to do it wrong, which I think is really important because there needs to be like some guidelines with this or else you can really mess up. So A, you want to get a pre-mixed oil that's like specifically formulated for your scalp, not an essential oil rosemary. Do not put that on your scalp. You shouldn't be putting essential oils from anything for anything on anywhere without diluting it. It actually says it right on the package. Um, some of the oils such as like tea tree and things like that can actually burn your skin if you don't dilute them so don't don't do that this one is formulated for it specifically um, you can use it down the ends but I am actually going to use a more like I would say like hydrating and repairing um, oil on my ends more so so I'm just gonna like massage this in really fast Another thing I see that's really important to talk about is that you do not, and I repeat myself because people always love to do this and they get themselves into such deep shit. Do not sleep with this in your hair. Please don't do that. People think like, like the longer something sits, the better, like the more it marinates. That's a lie, okay? Especially with oil, like if you leave on oil too long, like think about like what it is to your face. If your face is extra oily and you have like excess oil on there too long, you don't wash your face, you're gonna have breakouts, you're gonna have skin problems. Same thing with your scalp. Your scalp is still skin. You're gonna have a lot of clogging that actually can lead to hair loss if your hair follicles are clogged. So don't do that, okay? You should leave it in max four hours, apparently, four hours. I'm probably gonna leave it in for Minimum one hour, max four hours. So I'll probably leave it in for like two hours before I shampoo it out. I'm going to use the Olaplex Bonding Oil. This is one of my favorites um, for the my lengths and my ends. And I'm going to not saturate. You don't need to make it look literally sopping wet like I thought in the past. But you're just supposed to give it a good dousing and just make sure you get it in there. I've heard mixed things about um, to brush or not to brush the oil through. I don't know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I know you're not really supposed to brush your hair when the strands are wet because they are in a weakened state and you are more prone to breakage that way. So I don't feel the need to do that necessarily. I don't feel the need to brush through my hair. I just brushed it through pretty well before so it's not tangled. Um, and I'm gonna just massage it through with my fingers, I think. Let's just play it on the safe side because we definitely don't want more breakage. That's kind of what we're trying to avoid by doing all of this hair health love. Okay, so that is it for the actual oiling process. This ended up being longer than expected, so I think I'm just gonna make a part two. But this is how you do the actual oiling process. And I'm just gonna tuck it up and pin it up. I'm gonna go watch some TV, make some dinner, um, and then I will come back for part two for the showering out and et cetera, the aftercare. So that's all. Thanks for watching, bye.